Make sure you subscribe to our channel by clicking on the red subscribe button. And to never miss another lecture from Miracle, hit the bell icon to get regular updates on English literature. Hello and welcome to Miracle English Language and Literature Institute. I'm Professor Rava Sharma and as you all know that we are doing the critical appreciation of the famous epical poem The Wasteland written by T.S. Eliot. Till now I've done mythological background, then the first part The Burial of the Dead in four parts and then The Game of Chess in two parts. Today we're going to begin with the fire sermon. So, watch all the previous videos before watching this one to get the better understanding of the poem. Now, let's begin the fire sermon. The title, the fire sermon, has been borrowed from the teachings of Lord Buddha, 563 to 483 BC. And this sermon was against the fires of passion, fires of hatred, fires of infatuation. All these human passions are to be controlled. Therefore, Lord Buddha taught humans to have a control over all these passions which are very furious in nature and which ultimately cause the downfall of man. Therefore, Eliot has taken this title from there and has very appropriately uh, fitted here in the episode of the fire sermon. And, and he says that the river's tent is broken, the last fingers of leaves clutch and sink into the wet bank, the wind crosses the brown land unheard, the nymphs are departed. Sweet things run softly till I end my song. The river bears no empty bottles, sandwich papers, silk handkerchiefs, cardboard boxes, cigarette ends, or any testimony of summer nights. The names are departed. You know, there are cliches, there are refrains, and there are lines taken from the past poets like uh, Sweet Things Run Softly Till I End My Song is borrowed from. Edmund Spencer's Epithalamion. So he says that the youngsters who used to come to the bank of the river Thames, now they are no more to be seen. There are no signs of uh, their being there. That means there are no signs of their presence there anymore. No handkerchiefs. No tissue papers, no empty bottles, no cigarette ends, and no food boxes. The nymphs are departed. That means that nymphs are left or say abandoned by their lovers. The girls are now abandoned by their lovers. The trees were very shady during summers, and people used to come there and have a picnic kind of thing. They used to enjoy, the lovers used to sit under the trees, they used to have the snacks and other things, but now they're not seen there because the sons of the city directors, that means the son of the rich and uh, powerful people have abandoned their girlfriends. They have moved on. They are not to be seen there. The river's tent is now broken. The tent which was formed by the leaves surrounding the river is now broken. That means it is out of season. All the leaves have fallen down and the wind now crosses unheard. That means the breeze or the wind doesn't make any sound. The sound used to be because of the leaves there. But since there are no leaves, so no sound. And there are no people under the trees, no people on the wet banks, therefore it is deserted. The people don't come there, the lovers do not visit such places anymore, 
So it is autumn season and it is empty, deserted. There's a satire there that the sons of the city directors have left no dresses. That means they have abandoned the girls forever. They have taken away all their hopes of love and togetherness. They have cheated their girlfriends by being with them during spring and now it is autumn and they have also left them. By the waters of lemon I sat down and wept. Sweet things run softly till I end my songs. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yeah, we wept when we remember Zion. So the poet is lamenting the captives who were taken from Israel to Babylonia and they are missing their homeland. That's why they sing by the rivers of Lebanon. Sweet Thames run softly till I end my song. Thames do not overflow, do not end everything till my song, till I'm alive, till my passions are alive. Do not kill me before my passions. Do not kill my passions till I am alive. So he makes a contrast between Spencer's world and present world. This world was full of love, full of passion, full of desires. And this is desolated, deserted, mechanical, totally materialistic. But at my back, in a cold blast I hear, the rattle of the bones and chuckles spread from year to year. It seems Elliot was too much inspired by the poem of Andrew Marvel to his coy mistress because again and again he refers the same poem uh, giving different lines. And this line especially, but at my back I always hear time's chariot rushing by. That means soon everything is going to be uh, like the desert. It will be destroyed forever into a desert. This time's chariot will soon make all of us dead. There was greenery once upon a time. There were people enjoying their youth and love. And see, everything has changed. The season has changed. The moods of the people have changed. And that romantic passion has lost its value totally and it is not seen at all. So he's just giving you the two contrastive uh, situations that once there was life near the banks of the rivers and now it is totally lost. So he says that once this world was full of life, green rain today, it is a wasteland. Whenever you think of death, whenever you think that time is going to kill you very soon, fear, the chuckle made by the teeth. That means everyone knows this. And if you think of it, you feel a fear of death inside you. The chuckle of death is always there with us because we are hearing the time's chariot. Then the lines, a rat crept softly through the vegetation, dragging its slimy belly on the bank while I was fishing in the dark canal. The speaker is identifying himself with King Fisher. Everything was dull, desolated. He was important. Just refer the mythological background video for all these stories of Tiresias and King Fisher. So, He's identifying himself with King Fisher, who is fishing from the Dark Canal. We are looking for happiness, satisfaction and life from the place which is very dull, which is already dead, which has nothing left for us. We are fishing from that canal. What are we getting? Only the naked bodies, the bones, the white bodies which have come out of their graves. That means no life, only death in life is leading us everywhere. There is nothing to be expected from this now. We are spiritually, physically dead. The only thing is 
we are just breathing and surviving for nothing. But at my back, from time to time, I hear the horns, the sounds of motor cars, the vehicles moving. So how beautifully he has changed the past to present where he can hear the sounds of motors rushing or say the traffic on the road and this traffic or these horns or motor cars will bring Sweeney to Mrs. Potter in spring season. Mrs. Potter is the brothel keeper and Sweeney is a pimp who gets client uh, to Mrs. Potter and she sends her girls there. So again, this civilization is indulged in the most bad or disgusting occupations, cross occupations, which were never thought of in the past. And this has increased so much that the uh, pimps are working. There are so many people involved in such things in the flesh trade. So he says this only that all the moon shone bright on Mrs. Potter and her daughter. They wash their feet in soda water. They make their bodies artificially beautiful. Soda water is considered to be uh, one of the hack which can make themselves more beautiful. So just to get more trade, just to get more money, just to get involved in more of materialistic life. So these people are involved in such things which are morally wrong. So moral degradation, physical desolation and spiritual uh, degeneration has taken place in this modern world. And all this he has experienced from the modern society, from the world war from the people around him, from the occupation they uh, take over and from everything, every thought, every, the changing scenario of this world. And again, he says, there is a sound coming, twit, twit, twit. The nightingale is singing, the philomel is singing. Again, refer to the story which I have told you in the previous video, how uh, Philomel was changed into a nightingale and since then the bird is singing but the modern civilization, the modern people do not have ears for this melody of the bird but they only think of bad things. Uh, the sexual exploitation by the king, the brother-in-law of Philomel is only uh, imagined when they hear the bird singing that is Jag Jag to dirty ears. There's also the reference of uh, the Shakespearean play Tempest where Ferdinand is mourning his father's death and he hears aerial music uh, sitting near the bank of the... So let me finish it here and I will take uh, the rest of the third part, the fire sermon in my next video. And if you like my effort, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Do give your feedback and I'll uh, do my best to take up all the poems and the text you have asked me for in the comment box. Thank you so much. Keep in touch. Take care.